Welcome everyone, let's dive into the world of predictive classification modeling for real estate pricing tiers. Presented by Laxmi, Daniel, and Otai. Welcome to our exploration of the U.S. housing market's evolution over 50 years. Starting in the 70s, baby boomers pushed home ownership rates to an all-time high of 80%. The 2006 peak signaled a housing boom, which swiftly led to the 2008 recession due to high-risk lending. After a period of recovery post-2012, the 2020 pandemic reshaped our living needs, accelerating the quest for spacious homes and pushing home ownership rates to 67.9%. Our deep dive into 2 million property listings tackles the big question. How can we navigate high prices in today's market? By concentrating on crucial property features, our analysis delivers actionable insights that empower stakeholders. The goal is to cut through market complexities and provide support to make informed strategic decisions. Let's now delve deeper into how we harness data to drive intelligent real estate decisions one pricing tier at a time. Beginning with a robust cleaning of our data set, we eliminated irrelevant information like outdated listings and filled missing values, employing medians for numerical data and modes for categories. To ensure the integrity of our analysis, we removed duplicate entries and outliers, such as extreme property prices outside the normal range. We standardized our numerical data for consistency and transformed categorical variables into machine-readable format. Careful feature selections was crucial with an emphasis on variable, heavily impacted property values like location and amenities. Each preparation step was validated to maintain our data set's accuracy. These meticulous efforts provided us with a trustworthy foundation to effectively analyze and classify real estate pricing tiers. We segmented over 2 million listings into pricing tiers tailored to different buyer needs. Starter homes cater to first-time buyers with pricing under $300,000, offering affordability. Family homes ranging from $300,000 to $500,000 provide space for growth. Executive properties deliver luxury and modern for $500,000 to $1 million. At the top, luxury estates boost high-end features over $1 million. This classification simplifies understanding the market helping stakeholders make informed decisions based on the budget and desired amenities. Thanks, Ty. Now we'll be taking a closer look at a USA property data set used for pricing tier prediction through exploratory data analysis. Initially, the data set included around 2 million properties with an average price of $537,725. The majority featured three bedrooms and two bathrooms, predominantly located in Houston and Florida, classified mainly as starter homes. After outlier removal, the data set shrank to approximately 1.38 million properties, and the average price dropped to $323,319. Despite a decrease in property size, Houston and Florida continue to be prominent locations, and starter homes remain the most common pricing tier. This analysis is crucial for deeper understanding of the property market, enabling more informed decision making. Box plots provide a visual summary of five key real estate variables, offering insights into the market's distribution. They reveal that most properties feature two to five bedrooms and one to four bathrooms, with the lot size, house size, and price typically on the lower end, yet a minority showcase significant significantly higher values. This is skewness towards smaller and more affordable properties with a notable exception is crucial for understanding market trends and buyer preferences. The graph illustrates a distinct trend in the housing market where starter homes with three bedrooms and two bathrooms are priced notably higher than other categories. This could indicate a higher demand or value for such properties. The chi-square test reveals a significant link between a property's pricing tier and its key features such as bedrooms, bathrooms, lot and house size, price, and location. This means that these characteristics tend to vary in relation to property's pricing category. For example, properties in higher pricing tiers like luxury homes generally have more bedrooms and larger spaces, reflecting their premium 
status compared to more modestly priced starter homes. Thanks to Laxmi's groundwork, we see two distinct market profiles. The left chart shows executive properties as premium without outliers, while starter homes remain accessible. On the right, reintroducing outliers, luxury estate prices skyrocket, highlighting a niche ultra high-end properties and illustrating the dramatic impact outliers have on market analysis. Previously, the bars offered a broad overview of pricing tiers. However, the scatter plot particularly on the right, illustrates how outliers can skew average prices, misleadingly suggesting a higher market value. The scatter plot on the left, devoid of outliers, present a more typical market scenario. By excluding luxury estate price above $1 million, it offers a more realistic perspective for our analysis. The visual comparison is crucial for accurate market appraisal and strategic decision making. In California, the property value clustering around 500000 to $1 million exemplifies a competitive market driven by a robust economy and strong demand. This range suggests a high valuation of California lifestyle and amenities. Florida and Texas, however, are drawing in families and first-time homeowners with more accessible real estate options, perhaps influenced by economic incentives and growing housing inventory. These regional distinctions provide a barometer for market health and pinpoint hotspots for investments and growth, guiding buyers and investors towards informed decisions in a landscape of varied opportunities. Hi, and thank you, Ty. So to start off with feature selection, we have to use statistical analysis to figure out what affects price the most. The reason why we're trying to see what affects price the most is because price is our target variable. We utilize numerical columns for the correlation analysis to focus on the qualitative relationships between the different columns compared to the whole data set. We visualized um, this data using a correlation matrix via the heat map for uh, interpretation of the relationship. And as you can see, we got um, price effects priced the most. And then we also got bed which is the number of bedrooms, bath, number of bathrooms, acres, so how big the lot is, and the house size, so how big the house size is, as the top four that affect price. We see that um, since acre lot is negative, we don't really care if it's negative or positive, since we're going to be using the absolute correlation coefficients, but even with it being a negative, it is still if we take the absolute value, it's still a smaller effect than bed, bath, and house size. So when we chose our top three features, we chose the number of bedrooms in the house, the number of bathrooms in the house, and the house size to affect price the most. For the data split, we split features into numerical and categorical categories to allow pr appropriate pre-processing we employed label and label encoding for the target variable pricing tier to transform it into a numerical format what this means is that we transformed all the data into a numerical value to allow for the machine learning algorithms to actually be able to work we applied label encoding to the categorical var variables also to allow for capability of the machine learning algorithms we unified numerical and categorical features into a single data set for the training. So we took all the categorical data and all the numerical data and we combined it into one data set so that we're able to actually use the machine learning algorithms. And we conducted a train test split with an 80-20 ratio. So basically what this means, we used 80% of the data set to train the data and 20% to validate that the testing is correct for the data set and then we also verified that, verified that the sizes of the resulting data set for training and testing to ensure data integrity and capability with subsequent modeling tasks. Now I'm going to pass it back to Ty. Thank you. Thank you Daniel. Moving on, let's discuss the performance of our next two models. The random forest classifier 
which utilizes 100 decision trees, shows a clear range in predicting real estate pricing tiers with an accuracy of 76%, surpassing the gradient boosting classifiers 68%. Not just in accuracy, Random Forest also leads in precision recall and F1 score across the key housing categories, including starter homes, family-friendly homes, and executive properties. With an AUC ROC of approximately 89%, Random Forest surpasses gradient boostings 83%, underscoring a more refined differentiation between the pricing tiers. This comparative analysis suggests that the Random Forest integrated method holds a significant advantage for real estate marketing analysis. And thank you, Ty. So for the next two models that we chose to analyze, we decided that we're going to analyze the KNN classifier as well as the logistic regression classifier. To train the KNN classifier, we used five neighbors and achieved an accuracy of approximately 70.17% and an average precision of 66%. We generated a classification report for the KNN classifier, revealing the precision, recall, F1 score, and support for each class. This could be this could be seen in the technical report. For the logistic regression classifier, we obtained an accuracy of 57.81% after running after running the training, and a average precision of 51%. So as you can see that there is a big difference between the KNN classifier and the logistic regression. We also created a classification report as we did for KNN with the recall F1 score support and precision for each class that can be also seen in the technical report. Based on the two model comparison, the KNN classifier outperformed the logistic regression classifier in terms of accuracy and precision. As we can see, accuracy, we're comparing 70.17% as compared to 57.81% for the logistic regression. And just in accuracy, we could see that we have over a 13% difference, with KNN being 13% more accurate. And when we're looking at precision, uh, KNN scored a 66%. And logistic regression re uh, scored 51 percent as we can see we have almost a it was a little bit more than a 14 percent difference as you can see that is a big difference so when comparing these two KNN scores higher than logistic regression i'm going to pass it along for the next two models thank you thanks Daniel. now we will focus on comparing the performance of deep learning model and nave bias model Multilayer perceptron is a type of artificial neural network used in deep learning. In the comparison between deep learning and naive bias models, it is evident that each has distinct advantages. The deep learning model demonstrates superior accuracy with 67% and average precision at 75%, suggesting it is more reliable for making correct predictions and maintaining a strong positive predictive value. On the other hand, the naive bias model, while slightly less accurate at 60%, shows a remarkable AUC ROC score of 72%. This indicates its strength in distinguishing between different classes despite the deep learning model's need for optimization in AUC ROC, where it scores only 50%. It generally outperforms the naive bias model model in overall performance. However, the naive BIOS model's ability to effectively distinguish classes should not be overlooked. Model metrics comparison. The graph illustrates a detailed analysis of various predictive models evaluating their performance based on key metrics such as precision, recall, F1 score, and AUC ROC. Precision is critical for assessing the accuracy of positive predictions, while recall measures the model's ability to identify all relevant instances. The F1 score is a harmonic mean that combines precision and recall, offering a single measure of model's accuracy, 
AUC ROC on the other hand evaluates a model's capability to differentiate between classes. Comparing these metrics across models, we see that deep learning has the highest precision and recall, suggesting it is the most accurate at identifying high-priced properties without misclassifying too many low-priced properties as high-priced. However, its AUC ROC score is relatively low, which could indicate some issues in the model's ability to rank properties consistently. In this analysis, the random forest and gradient boosting models emerge as leaders. Random forest excels in all areas, demonstrating high accuracy, precision, recall, and an impressive F1 score, alongside a strong AUC ROC value. Gradient boosting also shows robust performance, particularly in precision, though it doesn't quite match random forest on other metrics. KNN and logistic regression show room for improvement, with logistic regression scoring the lowest score across all metrics, despite decent performance from naive bias and competitive results from deep learning, neither outperforms random forest and gradient boosting. In summary, while random forests stand out as the top performing model across all evaluated metrics, gradient boosting holds its ground with high precision. KNN shows moderate performance, but logistic regression and new bias require improvements. The deep learning model, despite a competitive stance, needs additional analysis to optimize its performance. As we wrap up our presentation, we just wanted to go over the key findings and implications of our project on predictive classification modeling for real estate pricing tiers using various machine learning algorithms. We took on the project with the goal of using the power of AI and machine learning to gain valuable insights into the real estate pricing dynamics. Our exploration led us to test a wide range of machine learning models and each of them did show their strengths and weaknesses and the capability using the data set we chose. Um, among all of the models that we chose, random, random forest classifier showed to be a standing out performer, showing highest accuracy and precision across the pricing tiers compared to all the other models that we chose. KNN did come in as a close second. Um, which showing also high accuracy and precision. On the other hand, logistic regression struggled to identify certain pricing tiers accurately and gave us lower accuracy and precision. We also analyzed naive Bayes and deep learning models. So they're showing promise for future optimization when we have a larger data set. But with the data set that we chose, it just didn't show as much promise as the other models did. In conclusion, our project tried to show the impact of machine learning and AI on analyzing the real estate pricing by leveraging different algorithms and techniques. We also only scratched the surface of what machine learning can do in navigating the complexities of the pricing properties. It is also a data set, which was a big data set, but obviously we could have chosen a bigger data set, which would have showed greater promise with some of the other models. We just wanted to thank everyone for watching. And if you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you. Have a great day, guys.